All right, so today on the very first episode of Straight from the Pot After Dark, uh, I'm going to paint this lovely Night Haunt Lord Executioner from the Soul Wars box, I believe. Um, you're right, that's not Conrad. Um, I think it's I think this is from the Soul Wars box. Um, I have almost exactly zero plans on how I'm going to paint him. Other than I know I'm not going to paint him how he is on the box art. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday who was using some contrast paint. And they were using Leviathan Blue. So I'm going to use that. And that is as far as my planning has gotten. But I'm going to start with that. And then I'm just going to pick another color. And we'll see where we end up. So I'm going to do the uh, the under robes. If you look at this guy, he's got uh, he's got some... Some under robes and some over robes, as I call them. I'm going to do the under robes in this color. Um, and I was talking to the same friend. I was talking to him yesterday, and we were talking about contrast. And I said, I think it's better. The, the darker a contrast paint is, the thicker it needs to go on. And that might be sort of counterintuitive. You'd think that maybe a thinner one or a, a less pigmented one would need to go on thicker so that there was more pigment on the model. But I think the darker ones actually need to go on thicker because if you put them on too thin, the the difference in how dark they get and how light the lighter areas are is very different. And so if you put them on too light, you'll end up with this weird splotchy effect, which kind of ruins the whole point of contrast paint so i'm going to put this on incredibly thick thicker than you would ever put on another a normal paint and even thicker than i would put on some contrast paints um this is i am loading this brush up and just not even brushing it on i'm practically just laying it on there and letting it do its thing so i'm just gonna get all of the all of the under robe here let's spin them around and make sure we don't get any of those sometimes if you if you're painting two sides of something in contrast paint and you let one side dry too much before you do the other side you'll get a weird line along the edge where your two coats mixed where one started drying and one didn't i don't think that'll be a problem with this because a these parts are so skinny and b this is such a thick paint but it's never a bad idea to to do the best practice even when it may not be a problem for you like I said I have absolutely no usually for these things I I plan the miniature a little bit and try to uh, lay out some basic colors that I want to use but in this case I have absolutely no plans and I think that's a that's a benefit of Night Haunt, to be honest. You can pretty much paint them however you want, and uh, they'll come out looking pretty okay. That's true to a greater or lesser extent with any uh, miniature army, really. But Night Haunt, because they are they basically have two colors on them, plus details. So as long as you do those two colors and two colors that don't look terrible together, you're pretty okay. I've been painting Stormcast recently, and I've been experimenting a lot trying to figure out what color scheme I want on them. And there, you can get a bad-looking color scheme on them. I don't know if it's because they have so much metallic on them that certain colors just do not lend well to being their primary colors or what, but they are... I've had some bad experiences with them. So just making sure to get up all under these cloaks here and making sure to put this on really thick. The other tip I would say if you're doing contrast painting is that you never want to touch the paint again after you put it on. You want to put it on once and then don't rub your brush on it basically ever again. That will cause you to get the same sort of splotchy effect I was talking about earlier. Unless you're going for that. Uh, I haven't yet found a reason to go for that splotchy texture, but if for some reason you are, then more power to you. 
it'll work out great. But oftentimes, if you're using like uh, just layer paint, you'll put it on and then you'll kind of push it around with your brush and maybe blend it into the color underneath it and you know all sorts of stuff like that. But with contrast paint, you want to get it on the miniature and never touch it again. All right, so that's that done. I think I'm going to move on to the spirit things coming out of him and the smoke coming out of his axe now. Because uh, the next color I want to do is this, but this is way too wet still. You try to butt up contrast paint like that and bad things are going to happen. Blending that you don't want. So for that, I think I'm going to go to the the tried and true ghost color of the contrast paint, which is Aethermatic Blue. <laughs> Woke up late, panicked about missing the stream, realized it moved to 8, then almost forgot while playing Total War. 10 out of 10. At least you almost forgot about the stream doing something fun. Like, almost forgot about the stream because I was shaving my grandma's legs or something that would suck but you know playing total war that's not bad all right so i'm gonna do these ghosty boys up here coming out of him in this aethermatic blue and again i'm gonna put it on pretty thick this guy is this guy is only attached to the base with the smoke and only attached to the smoke with his axe here and then only attached to his axe with his thin wrists so he will bounce around when you're trying to paint him but you can just hold on to him and it sh shouldn't be too big of a problem. Um, especially with this guy. He's convenient in one way because all his details are sort of splayed out. They're not all right up against each other. So you can be pretty not careful with your brush and uh, not have to worry about ruining your other paints. Or ruining your other colors, rather. So just going to cover all the ghosts. And while I am going to do the smoke coming off the axe in the same color, I am not going to do that immediately. I'm going to try something that I think is going to work, but I haven't actually tried before. And that is that I'm going to paint the silver of the axe on, and then while it's still wet, I'm going to put get this blue back and I'm going to just paint it on like in this direction to hopefully we're going to see blend the silver of the axe into the contrast paint as if it's sort of materializing out of the smoke or being formed by Nagash's energy or whatever. So that's the plan. Whether it actually comes out like that, we're going to find out, but I'm hopeful so far. Contrast paint has been very good to me and, Usually when I come up with an idea for contrast paint, it does pan out, but we're going to see. So this is the only part that you really need to be careful on this miniature, is getting the smoke that's up around his cloak. Still haven't figured out what color we're going to do the upper cloak yet. Um, if anybody who's watching has a suggestion, feel free to suggest it. I'm open to... Open to any color that is not leather or brown color because there's going to be a lot of brown on the noose and his leather straps, but otherwise, and not blue because we already have two blues on him. But if you think there's a color that will either look good or you just want the, up, the upper robes to be painted in, please let me know and I'll uh, give it some thought. Um, it, of course, has to be a contrast paint because that's what I'm using today, but... If there's a color in contrast, you're like, hey, you should paint it this color. I'm happy to have it. Otherwise, if I don't get any suggestions, I'll just stare at my pile of contrast paint until one jumps out at me. So there's the smoke, or the ghosts up here almost done. I'm going to come back to that in a bit, but already those are looking like some nice ghosts. So then, like I said, I'm going to get... I'm going to use some Grey Knight Steel, and I'm going to paint the axe, and I'm going to paint this on a little thicker than I normally would with layer paint, just so that it's definitely still wet when we go back with the Aethermatic Blue and try to blend it in. And I'm actually going to open the Aethermatic Blue and leave it open 
so that I can go straight into it when I need it. So first I'm going to paint this part up here. Blood Angels Red. Yeah, red would be an interesting combo, actually. With the dark blue. It's not a bad idea. I think we will do Blood Angels Red. Cool. And if it looks terrible, we can all blame Michael. Confirmed. <laughs> but no, actually, Blood Angels Red is a... Uh, sounds like it's going to be a good choice. Dark, go, it'll go with the dark blue well. It'll go with the light blue. It'll stand out, or the leather will still stand out against it. Yeah, that'll be good. Ooh, try a lighter purple to blend with the Leviathan like Magos. See, uh, that would have been a good idea, but Blood Angels Red came in first. So we're going to have to go with Blood Angels Red. Next Night Haunt I paint, light purple. You got it, man. I did actually paint a light purple uh, Night Haunt the other day. Uh, just as a joke, basically, just to see. Do I have him? Yeah, I do. Just to see what these colors were, would look like together, I painted this guy <laughs> the other day. And I think he, I think this green could actually work on a night haunt, but that green and that purple, oof, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna quickly paint some more of this silver onto this axe, and then we're gonna move to the blend, at least what we hope is a blend. So real quick, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And I'm gonna go straight back into the Aethermatic Blue or whatever the bright green contrast paint is. Wow, that, yeah, like I just showed. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna pull this down from the silver and see if it works. If not, well, you know, it happens. So I'm just gonna keep pulling down like this. At this point, it's almost all blue. And then do the same on the other side. Just like that. All right, and then sometimes with contrast paint, you find you have to do this. So there's an indent or a hole that goes all the way through right there. And it's filled up with contrast right now. So I'm just gonna take a brush and soak up what's in there so that we can still see through that hole through the smoke. Sometimes it'll take a couple passes, but there we go. That's all good. And we sort of got a blend. It's not, you know, it's not, a, not an A grade blend uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But it doesn't look any worse than if we had just done silver and the contrast paint. So I'm happy with that. We'll leave it like that. And then we will go on to... I'm trying to think if I want to do the red first and then the leather. Or the leather first and then the red. I think I'll do the red first. I have a feeling trying to get the red in between the leather in there would be a pain. So I'm going to do the leather first. For that, I'm going to use snakebite leather. And this is just going to be the straps holding the uh, gallows to him. And I think that's it on him. Yeah, there's no leather wrapping on his weapon or anything. He's obviously not wearing boots. So yeah, it'll just be this leather wrapping holding the gallows onto him. So being careful still, but I don't have to be super careful because we are all the areas around this are not painted yet. And the Blood Angels Red, as well as the darker brown that we're going to use for the wood, will all cover this up. Um, but I still want to be careful, just out of principle. It's good to uh, it's good to stay disciplined and stay in between the lines when at all possible. So I'm just going to get the back now. He is really bouncy. Uh, where can I hold him? There, right there. <laughs> As he gets more and more paint on him, it gets trickier and trickier to find where he can actually hold on to the model. All right. Let's 
go in there and in there. All right, then I'm gonna spin them around. Actually, before I continue that, I just noticed there's a bubble right here of too much contrast paint. So I'm just gonna, with a clean brush, just wipe down towards the bottom there, pulling some of that paint off. Sometimes that'll happen on a, on spindly parts like this. Too much contrast paint will run down and you'll get a little bubble. It's not a big deal, especially with a dark color like this. There's no, uh, there's no tide marks to see or anything, so not a problem. So I'm just going to finish this leather up. And then I think I'll do the brown of the noose, or of the gallows rather, just to let this dry. And then we'll come back and do the red. Alrighty, so there's that. I think I got all of it. So then we'll do the dark brown of the noose, the gallows rather. I keep saying noose and I mean gallows. Uh, I'm gonna use Skeleton Horde or Agarus Dunes, basically whichever one I found first. Skeleton Horde it is. They're both pretty light. Uh, wait, what am I doing? Okay, well, my brain just completely took me for a spin there. This is the color I'm gonna use on the rope, not on the actual gallows, but since I grabbed it, we'll do that real quick. So they're both, like I was saying, Agros Dunes and Skeleton Horde are both light, sort of ropey colors. So whichever one I happen to find first, I just use that one, not a big deal. So just make sure to get the other side, obviously. And then just make sure the bottom of the rope is covered and the inside of the noose is covered. Yep. So that's good. Oh, it's just a little too light. God, bouncy figure. All right, he's good. All right, so then for the actual gallows part of this, I'm going to use, again, whatever I find first, either Sigor Brown or Wildwood, and Sigor Brown it is. Although now that I think about it, I think I'd rather have Wildwood. Wildwood is just a tiny bit lighter, and I think that'll work better in this case. Of course, ah, here it is, Wildwood. So we're gonna use that on the wood of the gallows. And actually, I'm gonna do it on the handle of his weapon also. So I'm going to steady him right here, and then I'm just going to get all the wood. And we'll come back and do the, uh, the rivets and stuff in a silver, but for right now we can just cover them completely just to make sure we get all the wood covered. Wood texture is one of the, the absolute greatest things for contrast paint. It takes it really well. Uh, so hopefully I can get that on camera. Once it dries, it will be easier to see. But I do love some wood grain for contrast paints. So there's a, like... There's a metal ring there holding the noose on, but we'll come back and get that later. But if we get some brown on it, it's not a big deal. Just make sure all the wood is covered. And make sure your brush doesn't hit this light blue. Um, you might be able to get the brown off the light blue if you immediately flood the area and really scrub it. But I would be, I would not be surprised, I'll put it that way, to find that you would not be able to get the dark brown out of the light blue. So I'm just going to be very careful and not have my brush wander. Just gonna make sure all the way back in there is brown. And then the back of the noose here, or back of the gallows. My brain can just not keep the word gallows and the word noose separate. 
my brain apparently they're synonyms okay just a little bit right there and then I think we're good yep there's a little bit of leather I need to touch up real quick oh now I need to get the top of the gallows <laughs> okay let's go back in real quick still on the wildwood and just paint the top of the gallows all right oh and I said I was going to do the handle of his weapon in this color too so I will to decide what color his skin is going to be also trying to think through contrast colors that would make sense as a skin color for him as a ghost and I wonder if I just do apothecary white I might actually I'll probably do apothecary white see how it looks and then maybe put a lighter color over it well not lighter than apothecary white but a light contrast color over it and see how that looks but I might be happy with apothecary white it has been bound to happen have been known to happen rather it is also bound to happen but just getting the weapon between his hands there and then down here all right all right, now I will go back and touch up that leather I was talking about. It's just the the bottom of one of the leather straps needs a little bit of paint to cover up the primer. Just right down here. There we go. That'll do. Alrighty. Oh, and just down here also. All right, so then I will go to the the Blood Angel's Red, and we'll do his upper robes with that. So, Blood Angel Red, where are you? Blood Angel's Red. There we go. I'm going to give this a good shake. I haven't used it in a couple days. Okay. And I'm going to do the part around the leather last, since I just touched that up. So I'll do his face first. And contrast is interesting because it's so thin. It's very easy to, if you change your mind about a color, to go back and, oh, got a white dot on his arm let me get that off real quick good all right so like i was saying uh you can always go back and change your mind about contrast as long as you're getting darker um if you don't like a color you can just very easily paint over it uh i don't foresee that happening in this case but just a since we kind of randomly decided on the red um if after we painted it we decided eh, the red doesn't look that good let's change it changing it would be a trivial task since it's so thin as long as you're going to a darker color you could also paint repaint it with the primer the brush on version and then recontrast uh, both would be acceptable but in this case we will not have to do that this red did end up looking quite good with this blue. Okay. There's that. And the other side, being very careful to not get it on this light blue. Steady the model up there. in here this is a pretty precarious spot to have to put paint but we'll make it happen I'm gonna flip them upside down on this one so I can get right in there and then 
flip them the other way and do the same thing. All right. And we'll just go in from the top. And get the rest of his cloak. And there's a couple spots there that I see I went a little crazy with the red. But they're on darker colors, so that's okay. As long as we can keep it off this light blue, I will be happy. Okay. Did I do it? Did I cover? Yes, all right. Primer's covered. The light blue is safe. Wonderful. Okay. So then I'm just going to go back and grab my dry paintbrush and just work that a little bit. I'm going to go back to the wildwood and cover up some of that red that got on the gallows. Just right there. Good. There's a little tiny piece in there that I'd miss the red on, so I'll get that real quick. Right there. Okay. Good enough. All right. Then I'm going to do the hands in apothecary white real quick. And then I'll move on to the metal. And then it'll just be time to decide what kind of finishing touches that need to be done to him. I think the... The light blue parts are going to be dry brushed with white um, to give them, give them a little more of a ghostly quality. Uh, the rest we'll have to see. I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to do his hands and his arms in apothecary white. Too much apothecary white there. Soak it back up. And go back in. Alrighty. So there's his arms done. Doesn't change that much, but it has, at least they have a color on them. That is what's important. Alright, I'm going to go back to the Grey Knight Steel now, and I'm just going to do the metal bits on the gallows. Just some rivets, and, or some screws, some bolts, whatever. And this ring up here holding the noose on. Just going to paint that real quick. And I think we'll come back and shade our silver also. But I'm going to do the dry brushing on the light blue first, because I think that'll significantly progress our model towards being done. So then I'm just going to get these screw heads or nail heads, whatever they are, up here. Being careful not to get any on the color of the gallows. Same thing on the other side. And then uh, he also has a little, like, wrist thing there that he was chained to something with. I'll do that after that uh, apothecary white dries. I'm just going to go back to the Blood Angels Red now and get the underside of this cloak that I missed. Just right in there. That's better. So now you actually see red when you look in there instead of primer. Alrighty, then I think I'm going to move on to the dry brushing. For that, I'm going to use my, my go-to white color, which is Reaper's Vampiric Highlight. And I'm going to use... Hmm. For this, I think I'm going to use this makeup brush. It's sort of a, a longer one as opposed to round. Um, and that will... That will help me uh, get the br or get the dry brushing to go down correctly. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on a piece of card, and then get some on the makeup brush. Load up the bristles, 
and then tap most of it off. But making sure that there is paint on all the bristles. So I'm not sure if you can actually see that, but there's just a hint of white in most of the bristles there. So then we're gonna go in and we're just gonna do this to the ghosts. And hopefully, after enough passes, you'll be able to see the difference. And hopefully, also, I will not break one of these ghosts off. I painted this model uh, once before on a commission, and I think I must have broke these ghosts off four times during the process. <laughs> it was bad. So there, then, if you look at the difference between these ghosts that I just dry brushed and these ghosts, they look much more ghostly. These still look a little monochromatic. So I'm just going to do the same thing to them. And get these back here. And then flip them around and do the same thing. Just like that. Then I'm going to get a little bit more paint on the brush. And then I'm going to do the smoke coming off his uh, axe. First, I'm going to clear the clog in my paint, <laughs> paint bottle. There we go. So load up the, load up the bristles again. Get most of it tapped off and then come in here and just dry brush the whole thing. Being very careful not to hit that blue. I think that blue might look good with a white dry brush, but I just don't exactly know. It might be too dark of a color to look good. So for now, I'm going to leave it and not do it. I say that. I might just do it. I'm going to risk it. I'm taking this white, same white, and I'm just going to lightly dry brush this dark blue. Here we go. If it doesn't look good, well, I screwed it up. No, I think it came out fine. That's a relief. I'm just going to do the same to the other side. I might actually do the same to the red, just to bring it all into uniform here. Not a super big one on the red, just a little bit. And actually, I might just leave it like that, just so there's a little bit of highlight on his face but I am going to go back in and put some of this red the blood angels red back into the eye sockets just so those are quite dark standing out against his robes there we go I think that looks good so then, let's see what else we need to do. That's about that done. Um, I think then I will shade the shade the silver. And for that, I'm going to use some Basilicum Gray contrast. I'm going to use this much like you would use Null Oil. Just apply it like a wash. It'll get into all these little rot spots here, or whatever they are, and and give the silver a little bit of difference here, visual interest. And then I'm going to go back in. I'm just going to take my thumb and in one pass just wipe just to give some of the shine back to the axe. Same side, or same thing on the other side, so that we have some of the black still up here and in the little holes and stuff, but not completely covering all the silver. I'm going to then take the Grey Knight Steel again and paint the little wrist part. Like 
like this. And then depending on what time it is, I'm going to do a base for this guy that hopefully will look pretty cool. All right. So there's that. So he's basically done at this point. Um, you could obviously go way farther and do all sorts of stuff to him. But for my purposes, he's done. Um, I'm now going to attempt to do a base on him that I think will look pretty cool. So I'm going to start with some texture paint. Um, specifically some Sterling mud, I think. Uh, not sure if I have any handy. Let me just get up real quick and grab some. I'm also going to grab a water effect. So there's some sterling mud, and here's some water effect, and got that. And then I'm going to grab my tufts. I have a new storage system for tufts that I think I've pioneered, but I don't know for sure. Um, I got a, I got a, I got a six by six photo album, and I just keep the tufts inside the pages of these and that works great uh, so i'm going to grab these swamp looking tufts out of here stick that over there all right so we're going to start like i said with some sterling mud and we're going to cover we're going to cover the entire base with this but we are going to leave some parts thick and some parts thin and technically, I should let this dry in between the steps I'm about to do. But I don't think anybody wants to sit for an hour and watch this paint dry. So we're just going to just gonna do it while it's wet and see what happens. If it comes out terribly, well, then it comes out terribly. So I'm just going to... Um, and this is non-crackle paint. If you're curious, Sterling Mud is the just the texture paint. So I'm just going to cover this completely. Just like this. Just a little bit more back here. And I'm just using the, uh, the Citadel scooper tool for this but you could use a brush just make sure you wash your brush out after using the texture paint the little granules can ruin the brush if you leave them in there too long and I'm just going to kind of push this texture paint around a little bit just to make a couple indentations that sort of thing and then I'm going to quickly hit this with the hair dryer just to just to the top layer of this is dry. Don't need the whole thing to be dry, just a little bit dry. That's probably good enough. As you can see, it's still not dry by any means, but there is a thin crust on top. That's what we're looking for. So then I'm going to take some of my tufts here, some of these swamp tufts, and I'm just going to stick one here, I think. That works. And then just one more because they're quite large. Um, I think this one. And I'm going to stick that right over here. All right, good. Then I'm gonna take some Plague Bear Flesh contrast paint. Plague Bear Flesh. And I'm gonna get a bunch of it on my brush and just drop some of it on this texture paint. Um, it's gonna mix around because the texture paint's not dry completely. It's gonna do some funky things, I'm sure, but that's okay. We're just trying to mimic potentially what swamp water would look like quickly and easily. 
So I'm just going to put this around in a couple places. It'll mix with the brown. Like I said, it's not a big deal. Um, if you're super concerned about the paints mixing, then don't do this, but I'm not super concerned about it. All right, so there's that done. So then again, I'm going to hit this with the hairdryer for just, just enough to cure the top layer. Okay, so now that's done. So then I'm gonna get one of these things from Green Stuff World, which are little silicone half cylinders here. And they're just to hold your miniature while you pour some resin in it. So I'm just gonna set his base. He's on a 40 millimeter base. So I just set him in there. And then I'm gonna take my UV resin Give it a little bit of a shake. I don't know if you have to shake it, but I'm in the habit of shaking everything that I put on a miniature, so. And then I'm just going to, let's zoom in so you all can see this. All right. So then I'm just gonna put this straight in here, um, but I'm going to make sure that the resin level does not go above, A, doesn't go above uh, this, but also doesn't go above the grass because I want some of the grass sticking out. So I'm just going to squeeze this in here like this, making sure to get all the way around. Make sure to get all in there and then spin it. Get some more over here. Kill that big bubble. So little bubbles are not going to be a problem, but if you see a big bubble forming, you should try to get rid of it. And then just a little bit more back there. And then what I do is I just take it and tap it like this. Just to self-level it a little bit. And then, so you got the resin in there. Looking like some... Some nasty swamp water. Then you take your UV, oh, let me zoom out. <laughs> take your UV flashlight and you just shine it on this resin. And in a couple minutes, it will be dry. Um, I'm not gonna, not gonna make you guys sit through this whole process. Well, nope, you know what, I am. I want the finished product in this video. So I'm just gonna sit here for a couple minutes shining this UV flashlight on this thing. And uh, eventually this resin will dry, probably about five minutes or so it'll be dry. And then the only thing left will be to paint the base rim and he'll be all set. So you just wanna make sure to, if you do this, just to get the sides here with the UV flashlight. Um, there are better ways to cure this for sure. Uh, they, they sell UV lamps that you could just stick him under and it would cure the whole thing at once, be super easy. This is just a convenience for doing it on stream. Just want to make sure that all the resin is cured. And if you are doing this, uh, the resin cures, which with I, what I believe is an exothermic reaction, meaning the heat comes out. Um, and this resin gets quite hot as it's uh, curing. I can feel it through the silicone even. So be very careful when you're doing this. You don't want to burn yourself. So I'm just going to make sure it's all cured. It's probably not yet. Let's get the flashlight all the way around. All right, that's good enough for now. Um, I'll see if he'll pop out. If not, then he'll need to cure for a little bit longer. Uh, no, I think he will. Yep, cool. So there he is. Let me zoom back out. And there he is. So there's his base, his little swamp base. Him, night haunt, riding through a swamp. I think it fits pretty well. I'll just give the resin a little bit more time to dry, and then I'll paint the base rim. But that'll do it for this episode. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday, but I'll, on Wednesday I'll be on the main Galactic channel. 
uh, painting some sort of D&D something or board game something. And then f that's at 1 o'clock. And then Friday, I'll be back in this channel at 1 o'clock also, painting something related to Warhammer. But yeah, that's it for him. I will paint the base room in a couple minutes and then post the picture up on Facebook. But thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you next time.